seeing directly. So in order to see what I'm pointing to, the best place for you to be will be on this side of the lab. Okay. So, uh, as a matter of fact, put them this way. No, I'm not playing three card Monty. Uh, let's see. Because that's a left eye, that's a right eye. So we're going to set them up side by side so they are oriented with respect to each other properly. All right, so how do I know that? Well, there are a couple of clues. I can actually see uh, the, the maxilla here, right maxilla. Uh, but the most obvious thing I look for in determining whether it's a left or a right eye is this object. This is the lacrimal gland. This is the lacrimal gland right there. And so the lacrimal gland is always on the lateral surface of the eye. So lateral, lateral, medial here. Okay, midline would be here. Okay, so left eye, anterior view, right eye, anterior view. Getting oriented is absolutely critical in, in anatomy. When I had my shoulder surgery, they rolled me in, they were about to roll in the OR at 7 a.m. They gave me this checklist to read over before they put me under, so make sure everything is accurate. I said, um, first thing I notice on here is you've got me down for left shoulder surgery. It's my right shoulder you're supposed to be operating on. So, anyway, so left eye, right eye, and we have the uh, lacrimal gland, left lacrimal gland. You can also see lacrimal ducts. One, two, three, four, five lacrimal ducts shown here. No lacrimal ducts are shown on that model. So each model has some good things and not so good things. Let's try to use both of them. Between them, they cover a lot of bases that only that one of them would not uh, do as well. Uh, so lacrimal gland, which is a two-part organ, right there. You see it's a two-part organ. Uh, with lacrimal ducts. So the lacrimal glands produce lacrimal fluid, tears. And uh, lift this off, those tears, that lacrimal fluid, would wash over the white of the eye and would wash over the transparent cornea as well. So putting this back, the lacrimal fluid wash over the, wh the white of the eye and the cornea and would collect medially, this little medial notch is called the medial canthus, little pink tissue in the medial canthus is called the carinkle. Uh, it's a mucus membrane, a mucus secreting substance, a uh, mucus secreting membrane rather. Uh, so the, you know, the, you know, when, you, when you get, uh, you know, wake up with eye boogers, that's actually the mucus produced by the carinkle uh, here. And there's a hole, a little, that little black hole right there, and there should be one above it, and there it is. So this is, this is, this would be the left inferior lacrimal punctum the left superior lacrimal punctum. So a punctum is a hole leading into the lacrimal canals. So that's the left superior and the left inferior lacrimal canal. So the lacrimal fluid produced here, drains through here, washes over the anterior surface of the eye, the white of the eye and the cornea, collects immediately on the canthus, drains through the two puncta into the two lacrimal canals, and then enters the lacrimal sac, the left lacrimal sac. Uh, here is the right lacrimal sac, right there. Yeah. And this particular model, whoops, transversely sections the uh, lacrimal sac right there, so you don't see it continuing inferiorly. This other model does a better job of showing it continuing inferiorly. So from lacrimal sac, it tapers to form the nasolacrimal duct. The nasolacrimal duct drains through the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, lacrimal bone into the nasal cavity. So it actually goes through the lacrimal bone and drips lacrimal fluid or tears into the nasal cavity. So the nasolacrimal duct right there. Okay, uh, let's see, what else do we have on here? The two eyelids, the uh, palpebrae. So this, this is the left superior palpebra left inferior palpebra, the two eyelids. This is the eye opening muscle, the levator palpebra. It levitates, it raises the upper eyelid. So when this muscle, the skeletal muscle contracts, it lifts the superior palpebra. That's the eye opening muscle. The lower eyelid doesn't really move. There is no muscle associated with that. The eye closing muscle is not on either one of these models. That's called, that's called the, uh, the, the orbicularis oculi, but 
neither model shows the eye closing muscle. All right, um, what else? We take this off, turn it around, uh, we can see the again, lacrimal gland, lacrimal ducts here, but the, uh, what's, the, what's the mucous membrane that lines the inside of the two eyelids, lines the inside of the superior and inferior palpebra? It's called the conjunctiva, like a highly vascular uh, mucous membrane, the, the, uh, lining the, the back of each eyelid. And conjunctivitis is inflammation of the conjunctiva. All right, uh, now, now we've got both of these looking more or less alike. The cornea, this is a better example of the cornea there because it does bulge out, it's quite convex. The cornea is avascular and transparent. The white of the eye, which does, is not just the front, it goes all the way back, as you can see, it goes all the way back to here, it goes all the way back to there, is opaque and vascular. So when your eyes are bloodshot, that's due to burst capillaries and this, this opaque layer, which is called the sclera. So the fibrous tunic of the eye, the outer tissue, the outer covering of the eye, the fibrous tunic of the eye consists of the, the opaque vascular sclera and the transparent avascular cornea, like there. Uh, now, directly attached to the sclera are six skeletal muscles. They're called the extrinsic eye muscles. So you have the, uh, the, the left superior rectus, rectus meaning it goes straight back. You have the right superior rectus. Uh, you have the left lateral rectus, the right lateral rectus. Uh, here we've done, we'll, we'll have to do it on both sides now. So left medial rectus we see here. Uh, and a better view of the inferior rectus would be here. Again, the point is rectus means it goes straight back, okay? Now look at this other muscle there. This muscle here, there, this, um, sort of looping underneath and going, moving up angle diagonally. That is the left inferior oblique muscle, running at a di running uh, neither uh, ru running at an angle, running diagonally would be the, the inferior oblique muscle. Uh, this tendon here uh, would actually join, if not shown. The tendon would form a muscle tendon junction right here. The muscle that's missing is the superior oblique. So there are six total extrinsic eye muscles, skeletal muscles joined to the sclera. Uh, the four rectus muscles, superior, inferior, medial, lateral, and two obliques, a superior and an inferior, inferior. So there's inferior rectus, and underneath that is the inferior oblique. So the superior oblique muscle is missing from this particular model. That model's got all six. So remember, right eye, so right what? Guys, anyone? Leviator. No, the, no, the, the leviator palpe the palpebra okay. is, is only on this model. Okay. This one doesn't even show the palpebra, it doesn't even show the eyelid. Okay. So these, this, this is one of the six extrinsic eye muscles forming, uh, uh, forming a junction with the sclera here, for, forming a, a, an attachment to the sclera. This is superior rectus. Rectus. Right. Lateral. Lateral rectus. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Uh, let's see. What do we have running diagonally underneath here? Inferior oblique. Inferior, inferior oblique. Very good. Uh, let's see. Now it might be a good idea to take these off so we can see what's going on in here. So what's this coming underneath? Going straight back? Inferior oblique. Inferior, straight back. Inferior um, rectus. Rectus. What's this going? Straight back, medial rectus, and above it, going, going up here and looping through number 18, this U-shaped structure, and forming a tendon joined to the sclera here. Remember that 
tendon there. This is the superior oblique. So the superior oblique is directly above the, uh, the, the medial rectus muscle. And the superior oblique forms what's called a muscle tendon junction, red being the muscle, white being the tendon. And the tendon loops through this U-shaped structure, noted as number 18 over here. That's called the trochlea, the pulley, Latin for the pulley. And the trochlea there, and the tendon goes through and attaches to the sclera here. So superior oblique, medial rectus, inferior rectus, inferior oblique, uh, lateral rectus, and superior rectus. That should have been six. I wasn't, I wasn't counting, but that should have been six. Oh, what's this thing extending from the rear of the eye? That is the nerve. Optic, optic nerve. nerve. Optic nerve coming out here. The white surrounding, by the way, is epinurium. Remember, epinurium is the, uh, the connective tissue wrapping around the nerve. So this is actually epinurium wrapping the actual nerve. So over here, we've got the epinurium wrapping the yellow optic nerve. So the yellow represents that bundle of axons of the optic nerve. And you can see the nerves are vascular. So we've got an artery in red and a vein in blue. Uh, so that the artery is the central retinal artery. The vein is the central retinal vein, shown here. The arteries carry highly oxygenated blood. Veins carry low oxygen blood. It's not zero, but relative, relatively lower oxygen blood. And by the way, uh, what color is all blood? What, what is the color of blood in veins? Red. Yeah. It's a, this blue business is really kind of, this blue versus red is really more of a convention here. All blood is red. So uh, the reason I say that is because I was hearing yesterday that one, one, of, one of the faculty members said that uh, uh, her daughter's teacher uh, was, tell, was telling the, the, the class that uh, the blood in the veins is blue. And so I said, Mommy, is it true? I said, No, it is not true. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Let's go in. Let's go inside here. So the fibrous tunic, recall, consists of the opaque vascular sclera, the transparent avascular cornea. Lift that off. Take some of the cornea out. There. So we leave, leave half a cornea on there, so it should be okay. I'm have to get that to go on here properly first. Okay, that's better. Now, fibrous tunic is the outer tunic. Then we have called the vascular tunic, high, uh, highly, uh, uh, let's see, yeah, a lot of blood supply, best way of putting it, a lot of blood vessels. So all the red and blue would be blood vessels here. The yellow would be nerves, by the way, axon bundles. So the vascular tunic consists of three things. Uh, I'm trying to get it out of here so it does not fall apart in my hands. The vascular tunic consists of the brown choroid layer, lots of melanin, the pigment melanin, uh, the white ciliary body, this ring here is called the ciliary body, and we'll see it actually consists of two things, muscle and processes, that's not shown in this, in this uh, outer view, and the iris right there. So choroid layer, so the, the, the middle tunic of the eye, the so-called vascular tunic consists of the choroid, the ciliary body and the iris. What's the hole in the center of the iris called? A pupil. So it's literally a hole. There's literally nothing there. And so when you push, poke through the pupil, what you're going to hit is the lens of the eye. Directly hit the lens of the eye right there. Put this, take this off. Goes back in. So. Not quite right. That's better. That's much better. Uh, so uh, there's a third tunic. So we're going from outside in, superficial to deep, fibrous tunic, sclera, and cornea, vascular tunic, the choroid, the ciliary body, the iris, and the innermost tunic is the retina, the actual retina, which we'll get to in a moment. But what we're seeing here are several things of importance. Between 
the cornea and the lens. So this is the lens right there. Also transparent and avascular. So the only avascular parts of the eye are the cornea and the lens right there. But between the cornea and the lens, or I'm running and tapping back and forth, is a space called, uh, called the anterior cavity of the eye. So the anterior cavity of the eye is between lens and cornea. But there's also an iris in there. You can see the bottom half of the iris in there as well. So the iris divides that anterior cavity into two spaces, an anterior chamber and a posterior chamber. So right in here, notice where, where the chopstick is, it's between the cornea and the iris. And that's the anterior chamber of the anterior cavity. Then, much narrower, can't quite get, oh, I can get it on the side a little bit, uh, the narrower space between the iris and the lens is the posterior chamber of the anterior cavity. So what's the significance of the anterior cavity? That's the anterior space of the eye that contains what's called aqueous humor, another plasma-derived fluid. So the aqueous humor is an aqueous solution, water plus electrolytes and non-electrolytes dissolved in it. All right, and the aqueous humor that fills the entire anterior cavity is made by the ciliary processes of the ciliary body. So, more on that in a moment. But posterior to the lens, we've got a really big space called the posterior cavity of the eye. So between cornea and lens, the smaller anterior cavity, behind the lens, the larger posterior cavity. And what normally fills the posterior cavity of the eye? A large ball of transparent jelly called the vitreous humor. So the aqueous humor is, is an aqueous solution, it's water plus solutes. This is a ball of jelly, clear jelly, with a completely transparent jello sitting in the, the back of the eye, right there. But we take that out, we can take, the, uh, take this out too, take this all out there, and we can see the tan layer in here. So I always put this in like this. So we go from outside in, we go from white sclera to red choroid to tan retina. One, two, three layers there. So all of this tan is the retina, the innermost tunic of the eye. And it only goes so far forward. So if, if we go from posterior to anterior, it stops right there. That's called the aura serrata, the anterior border, or the anterior margin of the retina is known as the aura serrata. And you can see the retina is highly vascular, lots of blood vessels in there. Actually, and all the blood vessels in the, in the retina are collectively called the Purkinje tree, and an ophthalmologist could actually tell uh, with an ophthalmoscope uh, whether the Purkinje tree appears normal or abnormal. Uh, here is the optic nerve in yellow, remember central retinal artery, and the blue representing the central retinal vein here. Uh, so ciliary body, anterior, uh, the outer view, ciliary body here is much, is actually considerably more complicated. So every ridge you see here, not the grooves between, but the upraised ridges, every upraised ridge side by side by side is a ciliary process. What did I say the processes do? They make what? Aqueous humor in the anterior cavity of the eye. Here, this bulge we see here, this bulge we see here, actually joined to the lens, take that out, continues all the way down like that. That this is the ciliary muscle, the smooth muscle. Uh, so the ciliary processes are making aqueous humor, the ciliary smooth muscle is joined to the lens and actually controls the shape of the lens. When we're focusing on something, we're actually altering the shape of our lens to focus. And also, what's, what else is needed for that lens shape change these little white strands right here, these are called suspensory ligaments. Right here, suspensory ligaments. They actually, so one end would join to the rim of the lens, the other end of the ligament would join to the muscle, the ciliary muscle. So this end would join to the lens, and this end joins to the muscle. So when the muscle contracts and relaxes, it tugs and or loosens the, uh, the uh, uh, ligaments, suspensory ligaments, and you get either the bulging or the flattening of the lens, which is necessary for, uh, for focusing. Okay, put this back in, and we would have 
light reflected from some object, and say, say we're looking, say I'm looking at that paper towel dispenser, looking straight at that paper towel dispenser. The light reflecting from that, from that dispenser is coming in to both of my eyes this way, directly through the transparent cornea, through the transparent aqueous humor, through the pupil of the iris, uh, through more aqueous humor, uh, through the transparent lens, uh, through the transparent vitreous humor, and we go all so straight back. It should end right about there, just a little bit lateral to the optic nerve, right there. So there's the optic nerve. So we're so there's the midline here, and just a little bit lateral to the optic nerve. So what should be here, they've got way the hell over there. That's way too far lateral. This is called the macula lutea, yellow spot, Latin for yellow spot. Uh, and in the center of it, although you can't really see a depression, there's a little dip in the center of it called the fovea centralis, Latin for central pit. That's where you've got the greatest cone cell density. Cone cells are packed in the macula lutea there. So uh, what, do, what do you know about cone cells? Anything at all? Color. Color, color discrimination. Yeah, color discrimination. Um, also focusing, what's called visual acuity, really sharp vision is, is more of a cone cell function than a rod cell function. Uh, and in terms of how they respond to brightness of light, cone cells don't respond as readily as rod cells do. In other words, if we were in a completely darkened room and we had a rheostat controlled lighting system, we start turning the rheostat, as the light starts to, to come on, it's still quite dim, the first cells that will respond to be the rod cells. Continue turning the rheostat dial, it gets a little brighter, and at some point, the cone cells come into play. So cone cells require brighter light than rod cells. And cone cells also are wavelength discriminating. They are color sensitive. Rods, not as much. Rods are mainly black and, for black and white vision. And in terms of where you find them in the retina, you have both rods and cones in the retina, uh, the greatest density or concentration of, of cones be right there at the macula lutea and fovea centralis. So they've got them over here. They've got too far lateral. They've come straight in. That's what you should hit, the macula lutea and fovea centralis. But as you move away from there, moving forward to that worst radar, gradual decline in cones, gradual increase in rods. So they overlap each other, but in opposite directions. So as you move anteriorly, toward the aura serrata, fewer and fewer cones, but more and more rods. So peripheral vision is predominantly rod cell vision. So when you look at something out of the corner of your eye, it's more difficult to tell the color of it than it is straight ahead, because you're using, using mostly rod cells, which are not really good at telling colors apart. Um, what else, what else, what else do I want to get into here? That should pretty much do it for this. Let's see if there's anything in here that's worth noting. Well, as soon as we take this off, we can see all of this is the retina. So you've got the white sclera of the fibrous tunic, the brown choroid of the vascular tunic, and the innermost tunic is the retina, sometimes called the neural tunic, or nervous tunic. So uh, let's see. This particular side does not show the macula I think that side, the bottom half does. Come forward, there's the aura serrata, the anterior border of the retina. And every band is a ciliary process for the making, for the converting of plasma into aqueous humor. The white strands are the uh, suspensory ligaments here. Okay, so we have a weirdly flat cornea, usually much more convex. You can see there's the pupil through the iris, so the brown, the brown you see is the iris, and there is no lens with this model. This model is missing a lens, uh, but it does have the vitreous humor filling the posterior cavity of the eye. It does have the vitreous humor. More on that in a moment, but remember I said you look at something straight ahead, like you're looking at a paper towel dispenser, light reflects from it, straight on back to my left macula lutea and my right macula lutea. So straight on back, we'll get me to there. 
right there. So this is la so the macula lutea, either eye, is lateral to the optic nerve. And that's where the optic nerve is leaving the back of the eye, right there. And so the macula lutea, the yellow spot, the pit in the center, fovea centralis, central pit. Most just just a very very high density of cone cells here. Uh, let's see what else. The uh, let's go on to the actual neuron, actually the actual cell layers that make up the retina, from anterior to posterior. So we have an anterior cell layer shown here in green. These are the ganglion cells. These are the only cells that actually generate action potentials. Can you see there? Can you see these skinny strands, skinny green strands here? These are the axons of the ganglion cells. They bundle together to form this. Ganglion cell axons actually form the optic nerve. So they, they bundle and they actually go back and leave the rear of the eye. Go uh, look, continue posteriorly. You see these orange cells. These are the bipolar cells. We don't need to worry about these two types of black cells here. Uh, they're not on your list for the, of the objectives. So these, these orange cells are the bipolar cells. And you can see cell body with a process extending from each side. Two processes, bipolar. Then we go back a little bit more. We come to the photoreceptor cells in blue, the actual rods and cones. We can actually tell rods from cones. Uh, rods are longer and skinnier. So this is a cone. Here in blue, follow it. Got, got a kind of a large cell body there, and it stops right there. Next to it is a longer, skinnier blue cell. That's a rod. So this is a cone, rod, 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 rod. There's a cone, there's a cone, rod, 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 rod. What does that give you the impression of in terms of uh, numbers? More They're what even. than what? They're not even. They're absolutely not even. Many more rods than cones. About 20, about 20 times as many, about 20 rod cells for every one cone cell. All right, so, and, and then finally, bringing up the rear, is a layer of pigmented cells, the, the pigmented epithelium of the retina. These are not neurons at all, okay? And that should be it.